Tonight we're going to uh, we're going to continue our series that we've been going through over the last number of weeks. That series is called Stories of Revival. We've been looking at famous revivals in the past where God moved in great and powerful ways, and and we thank God for that. But tonight we're going to look at another well-known revival. Well, actually, it's not that well-known. It is to us, but maybe not to people around the world. We're going to look at the Abraham revival. Did you know that God moved in this little community? Did you know that God poured out His Spirit in this, in this community many years ago? He did that. He's been doing it constantly as well, and we pray for even more in the days to come. But, you know, God's promised us as a church in Haggai 2 verse 9. I'm going to read it from the message translation. It says this, this temple is going to end up far better than it started out. A glorious beginning, but an even more glorious finish. A place in which I will hand out wholeness and holiness. Decree of God of the angel armies. The latter days are going to be greater than the former days. That's God's promise to this church. But you know, the Abraham and revival, it happened in 1919. Now, as many of you know, as we've looked at even in previous weeks, we see that God moved in Wales in powerful ways in the revival in 1859, but also in the 1904 revival as well. God moved incredibly in this land and it shook the world in it. And it moved, God moved, as we've seen in, in Kentucky, we looked there in the Asbury revivals. We see how God moved in LA in the Azusa Street revival. That all came from God moving here in little old Wales in 1904, where we've seen over 100,000 people come to know the Lord in just the first six months. Lives were transformed when God moved here in Wales. It was a sovereign move of God. And we've seen whole communities, our nation's seen whole communities turned completely upside down. Communities that were living in darkness were changed by God's glory, by his love, and by his goodness. Crime rates dropped. See, the police force, they, the police force, they were struggling to find things to do because people were getting saved and their lives were being changed. The courts, they were empty. There were no problems because of what God was doing. And we see the pubs and, and bars and stuff, they were all shut down. Sports events and things like that, they were all closed because people were flocking to the house of God. People wanted to come to the house of God. Even in those times, reports from the 1904 revival, the family life completely changed. God moved in the whole life and how we need that today as well. Souls were saved, individuals, families were changed. Society was completely changed. Many people came to know the Lord. But you know, during the latter part of 1905, that was 1904, but in 1905, Evan Roberts, who was the central figure, I think I got a photo of him up there, if that's right, please, George, there he is. Uh, <laughs> Evan Roberts, he was the main man, so to speak, that God used to bring about this revival in our land. But in 1905, at the end of 1905, Evan Roberts, he suffered and a, a, a nervous breakdown. He was exhausted from all that had happened in the 1904 revival, but some persecution came against him. Actually, it was from somebody up in a church in Dowlais. Somebody came to him and began persecuting him and saying that the revival, what God had done here in Wales, wasn't of God. He was saying it was of man instead, and that really discouraged Evan Roberts. So much so, it came to the point that Evan decided he needed to have a break from preaching and from teaching about Jesus. He, he decided he needed to have a leave of absence. And as a result of that, the revival where God moved and our communities, Wales was changed by God, all of that began, began to dwindle down, unfortunately. We see the, the society, Wales, began to struggle again. And our society began to turn away from God Again, this nation that was saved by God, where God touched the hearts of young people, old people, where God moved, they didn't want anything to know, they didn't want to know God anymore. Add on top of that, we see the start of the world war and things like that, that really added to the challenge and difficulties within our nation. But you know, there were still some people, despite the fact that society had started to turn away from God after the revival, we see there were still some people who were desperate for God. They didn't want to just go to church. They didn't want to just go through the motions and have religion. They wanted to know God. They wanted to know Jesus. They wanted to encounter Him. And there was a small group of people from this community, from Abraham, actually seven people, and they were involved in another church just up the road in a church called Guau, just up the road there. And uh, they had heard about the revival. There's a picture of Guau. And they had heard about God, what God had done. 
And these people, this group of seven people, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They had a real encounter with God. And the church at that time in Guar, they hated it. They hated it so much so that they kicked this group of seven people out of that church. They had no way to go. But that didn't stop this group of seven people. They decided that they were going to form a church. And so they would meet in various homes around Abraman, around our community. They believed that God stirred them so much that God gave them a word that they decided that in 1917 that they would buy this building that we were in. This building that we were in was actually a pub. It was known as the Gin Palace. I thank God there's a different spirit in here today than there was back then. But we see that they bought this place, this old pub. They bought it because they believed that God was going to do something great in this community. They longed for Jesus to change people's lives, young people, old people. They longed to see God move in hearts and lives. And so they bought this church and they were desperate to see God move. Well, you know, after the 1904 revival and during those times, God moved on certain individuals. And there was two brothers, two famous brothers, who came out of the Welsh Revival who were tremendously used by God. And their fame was spreading right the way throughout Wales. These brothers were known as the Jeffrey brothers. I don't know if any of you have any ever heard of the, these. George and Stephen Jeffrey. There's our church back in the 50s, that is, I think. That's not 1917. I don't think they had photographs then. They didn't have iPhones then, so they couldn't put that on Instagram or anything like that. But, but you know, we see that George Jeffreys and Stephen Jeffreys, these famous preachers, there's Stephen Jeffrey there. They were going around Wales and they would began telling people about Jesus, about how God loved each and every person in this world. And people were responding to this message. They wanted to know God. They felt there was an emptiness in their lives. They realized there was more to life than just the way that they were living. And people by their hundreds were coming to know Jesus. And so, and our community and a group of people in our community heard about George and Stephen Jeffries. And they invited Stephen Jeffries to come to little old Abraman, the middle of nowhere. They invited this big preacher to come to little old Abraman and they asked him to come and host some special services here in Abraman. And so they went to the church, which is across the road in Lewis Street, Libanus. It's now a block of flats. You've probably seen it there. It's now a block of flats. But this meeting was held there in 1919, in November 1919. And Stephen Jeffries held this meeting and, and we see that God moved powerfully in this meeting. It was only supposed to be one meeting, but it ended up, Stephen Jeffries ended up staying in Abraham for three weeks because God was so moving, moving so powerfully. And what he preached wasn't just a nice little message just to comfort people or help people. He taught from the Bible. He taught, taught the true word of God. He talked about the judgment of God. He talked about the second coming. He talked about how Jesus was coming and coming again and for people to get their lives and their hearts ready so that they're not left behind when Jesus comes again. God moved powerfully in these meetings. It said that in these meetings that there was great healings. People were being healed. It said that there were many people and mainly young people were filling those services, were saved in those meetings, came to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. God was moving so much so that it was reported in the newspapers all around Wales at that time, there was reports in of this big Welsh revival in the Sunday Chronicle. And I believe, I think I've got an a, a expert out there. It is the Aberdeen leader. Even in the Aberdeen leader, it speaks about, you can find this online, about how God moved powerfully in that church in Libanus there. And do you know how many people got saved in that little, in that church over there during 1919? 300 people, 300 people in 1919, God moved in our community. That's a revival in just three weeks. 300 people turned away from their wickedness, turned away from the bad things they were doing, they sin, and they said, I don't want to live like that anymore. I want to live for Jesus. I want to know Jesus. I want to know his life and life to the full. And that's what they did. They gave their hearts to the Lord. And I know that there are many of our family members, ancestors who were in that meeting, Many people in our, uh, of our ancestors were in that meeting and got saved and got touched by God in that meeting. And we're a byproduct of that even here tonight because of what God did all those years ago. God moved in a powerful way in our community in 1919. But you know, as we come to an end of this, this message tonight, as I was just thinking about this and just 
preparing this message. It was exciting to read about how God moved here in Abraham. And isn't it amazing? The God of the universe who created you and me, created this whole world. Isn't it amazing how God is interested in this place and God wants to move in this place? But you know, as I thought about that, the 1904, uh, 1919 revival here in Abraham, and I believe that God isn't done with this community yet. I believe God's not done with the families that live in the surrounding area. I believe that God hasn't finished. Yes, many people in Abraham and in Abadir, they don't know Jesus. Many people don't care about church or coming along to church. They think it's boring. They, they don't want nothing to know. Uh, they don't want to know about God. They don't want to have that relationship. They don't want to have that encounter with the living God. But God hasn't given up on them. God hasn't given up on you tonight. God hasn't given up on us as a church. I believe that that 1919 revival where God moved powerfully and changed lives forever that's impacted us here today, I believe that wasn't the end. God is not finished with us yet because God is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus still has a plan and purpose for our lives. If you think the 1919 revival was impressive, just wait to see what God is going to do. Just wait to see what God is going to do. What do I mean by that? Well, if you don't remember from September, I just shared a word that God laid on my heart for us as a church. Isaiah 60, 22. The smallest family will become a thousand people. And the tiniest group will become a night mighty nation. At the right time, I, the Lord, will make it happen. I believe we're going to be a church of a thousand people. I believe that God's going to move in this place and that it's not going to only impact us but I believe it's going to impact generations to come. I believe God's going to turn around lives. People who are stuck in brokenness and, and difficulties and darkness, they're going to encounter the light of God, the love of God. Their lives are going to be changed. We're going to see God do something incredible in this place that this community hasn't seen for many, many years. And I cannot wait for that day. You know, I know that, uh, I know Julie likes to say this. She prays this quite a lot, but I do believe this. God's placed us here for such a time as this. Just like Esther said, God has placed us here. We're here for a reason. And I believe God is gonna use each and every one of us to move in this place. So tonight, the reason why we are coming together isn't just to have a nice little prayer meeting, but it's to call upon the God of heaven and earth and ask him to do what only he can do, to change our family's lives, to meet those who are struggling and stuck in darkness this evening. We're going to pray for our community tonight. We're going to pray for Abraham and, and every family, every young person, every old person. We're going to pray that God would meet every generation. We're going to pray for our communities that we would see a move of God like we haven't seen for a very long time. And people will be desperate to encounter Jesus and know his life and know his love.